the South African Telecommunications Group, Telcom, this week reported that its profits uh, fell sharply for the year to March 31st. The company was hit by high operational costs at home and also tough competition in an operating environment in Nigeria and its Nigerian unit, Multilinks. Telcom reported that the headline uh, earnings per share had dropped to 46.8 cents for the year under review compared with 610.5 cents a year earlier on. Jeffrey Hedberg is the CEO of Multilinks and he joins us now. Thank you very much for coming Thank through. You. Two years ago when Telcom went into uh, Nigeria, it was an opportunity to partner with Multilinks. Now with these results, Telcom uh, refers to Multilinks as a liability. What, what went wrong? I think there is um, obviously great potential within Nigeria. The scale, the growth of the opportunity was uh, something that Telecom was very interested in. And they wanted to gain a foothold in order to be able to compensate for an erosion of share and revenues here within mm -hmm. South Africa to compensate for that in Nigeria mm -hmm. with that scale and with that growth. I think oftentimes ambitions uh, outweigh uh, execution risks and there are a number of risks in, in operating within the Nigerian market. A number of strategic and commercial uh, challenges, not to mention technical challenges right. as well. All right, now, um, Telcom has effectively played about uh, $450 million for Multilinks, which is said to be essentially a startup company, and Telcom wanted to ride the crest of their CDMA technology. Just talk to us about what CDMA technology is, and did you pay too much? I think it's important that we first understand the industry structure within Nigeria. You have eight operators. Four of those operators are operating within a GSM standard, which is what we use here within mm -hmm. South Africa. The other four are operating within CDMA. However, GSM controls 90% of the total mobile communications mm -hmm. market. CDMA has only 10%. So you have four competing for 10% and the other four controlling right. the 90%. Right. So in terms of scale, scale in channels, scale in terms of above the line advertising, it's been very, very difficult uh, in order to be able to leverage the scale, particularly against the GSM operators. Mm -hmm. At the time, I think there was an expectation that G GSM would decline and CDMA would grow, mm -hmm. uh, but that has not been the case. And uh, as a small operator within the CDMA space, that's really where a lot of the strategic and commercial right. challenges are, are generated. And why telecom, if you look at the ambition upon the time at the time, right. I think they thought that it was worth the money. Now looking back, obviously, given the write down, it uh, has not proven uh, to be. But some experts argue that there were signs, you know, you look at the signs and then you start to implement uh, a strategy to yes. try to mitigate the the risks. Multilink's voice subscriber base increased 19%, but in terms of their revenues, they fell from $12 million to $6 million, and already there was a disconnect. Why did Telcom not make any initiatives to fix that at the time, to be, you know, before getting to, to the situation where you've got all these impairments and liabilities? I've just uh, joined about four months ago. I was brought in in order to revive the, uh, the management team, to reposition the company in order to take advantage of its position, not only in mobile communications, mm -hmm. but there are tremendous opportunities in the enterprise data space because mm -hmm. there are a lot of companies, because of the scale and growth within Nigeria, manufacturing companies, financial services companies, oil and gas companies mm -hmm. that need to have bandwidth, connectivity, and security around mm -hmm. their requirements. So as we look at the CDMA voice business, which you're absolutely right is the majority of the business right now we're looking at how do we stabilize that business how do we grow profitably mm -hmm. and how do we focus more on what telecom is good at and that is providing enterprise data services to the corporates that migration is what I'm doing with my new management team right now okay it's also reported that um, you are in talks with other operators within Nigeria as part of limiting your exposure to the market in Nigeria, but also by way of coming up with the turnaround strategy. Could you just talk to us a little bit more about that? And if you can, give us a better sense of tangibly the steps that are going to be taken to fix this problem. What we need to do as part of the fix the present, because there are two components, fix the present and fix the future yeah. in your question. On the fix the present, we need to, as I noted, stabilize the business invest far more in a better segmentation and profitable revenue growth within that segmentation, fix some of the network and IT uh, areas, improve the processes, improve the efficiencies, as well as start to renegotiate some a very large fixed cost base within the company. So those are the things that we're doing as part of just breathing life and spirits back into the organization. In terms of looking at ways to mitigate our risk and leverage local partners, Telcom owns 100% of Multilink, so it would be important that we look at how we can leverage 
leverage local partners and other partners, both to improve the performance of the company as well as to mitigate the risks. So tangibly, we're fixing the basics now mm -hmm. because anything we do, whether it's a future partnership or a future opportunity to merge with another entity, we need to have a solid base to merge right. into. And at the same time, we're looking at different options in order to make sure that locally right. and uh, from a financial perspective that we're mit mitigating Is the risk. Is disposing of the asset an option at this stage? I, I wouldn't rule anything out, but I think you don't buy high and, uh, and, and sell low. So our team right now is quite confident. There are tremendous opportunities within Nigeria. It's all about execution. All right, just in terms of relevance for Telcom SA, and this is a, a question much broader and bigger than multilinks. I mean, some experts are saying Telcom is finding itself in a state of flux at the moment from being the monopoly fixed line operator moving into an environment when mobile is beginning to dominate and data services are beginning to dominate. It needs to be made relevant in South Africa and then competitive on the African continent. What's the way forward? I think primarily Telcom now needs to focus on its South African business and ensure that it's a capability to provide data uh, for both for the consumer as well as the business segments, voice, the triple play, quadruple play, that is very key for telecom right now to defend, if you will. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we need to take advantage of the opportunities elsewhere within Africa, but one opportunity at a time. This is not a flag planting mm -hmm. exercise. This is now let's fix multi-links, the reasons I've said earlier, mm -hmm. but at the same time, let's not distract a lot of management and financial attention mm -hmm. to Nigeria, despite the great opportunities. Let's look at what we need to do to fix South Africa. Right.